Hello, welcome once again to Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. And we are the, the Fair, Fair Tax Guys. Guys, still trying our best to get rid of the income tax and get rid of the IRS and get rid of the withholding and get rid of the payroll taxes and get you a monthly prebate. We're working on it, folks. We're trying really hard. Yep, and you can help out by telling others about uh, Fair Tax Power Radio. All right. Whatever medium you listen to it on, if you're listening on Spreaker or iTunes or iHeart, and some people still want, uh, look at it on uh, YouTube, or you've got the free app. Remember, we do have a free app for um, iPhones and Androids. Um, you just go to your app store, look for Fairtax Power Radio or the Fairtax Guys. Either one will get you there. Download the app. That is the simplest way to watch, uh, listen to Fairtax Power Radio. Tell others about it get other people on board it's a great way to learn about the fair tax and we try to take uh timely issues you know we talked about the tariffs in the last uh episode we try to take timely issues and and make them relevant and of course it always goes back to why the fair tax is superior to any other federal uh taxing system okay back to our regular housekeeping the fair tax guys at gmail.com is our email address the fair tax guys all one word at gmail.com if you'd like to send us a question or a comment about the fair tax we will answer you personally and if you write us a two-page letter single space we may even actually have you out here to interview you that's right <laughs> that has happened and we've gotten some great comments and, and suggestions and so forth from our, our listeners so please uh, feel free email us uh we, we get suggestions on videos to look at and so forth i you know i i check it every morning first thing when i turn on my computer and we're also on facebook uh, the facebook has a the fair tax guys page as well and you can see why we're on the radio and not television when we see our pictures <laughs> but uh, you can leave us a comment or a question there as well the fair tax guys at gmail.com is our regular email or a Facebook, uh, we'll have to do another Facebook Live. We will be announcing one. Not uh, not sure that we'll have a chance to get one in March, but we'll probably. I'd love to shoot for one right around April fifteenth. I'm not sure what day of the week that is. I don't have a calendar in front of me. Yeah, but let's 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 work on that one. And something else, real quick, a loose end that if if you missed last episode, we have now got the 2018 figures for the prebate. Now, of course, they're not in effect yet because we don't have the fair tax isn't law. But if it was, let's play. Wouldn't it be nice if? Wouldn't it be nice if, if you're a family of four, two adults and two children, wouldn't it be nice if the government would send you a check every month for $631, which is the amount of the prebate using the 2018 poverty level figures? Boy, now I tell you, a family of four that's just getting by, they're making just enough you know, to put food on the table and uh, uh, rent rent someplace or maybe uh, buy a modest home or whatever. You know, they're just getting by. Wouldn't that $631 really help them on top of the fact that they'll get their entire paycheck? Mm-hmm. I could buy some bowling balls with that. <laughs> there you go. So those people that give the knee-jerk reaction, oh, the fair tax is a sales tax. It's regressive. It hurts the poor. They don't know what they're talking about, do they? Oh, no, they don't. But I'll tell you what, one more advantage of my bowling balls over your golf balls. Oh. I have never lost a bowling ball in a water hazard. Uh, that I can understand that, and uh, I have lost plenty of them. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. Th- this is going to be a fun episode of Fair Tax Power Radio, and if we could just kind of set it up, I'll take potpourri for a thousand, Alex, okay? Because <laughs> you've got all kinds of stuff over there that we're going to get into Oh, today. I do, and we're going to start with golf. <laughs> oh, mercy. Yes, because a couple of that's, weeks ago. That's, that's a two-stroke penalty just to start. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've had those before, too. Uh uh, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I attended the Arnold Palmer Invitational in Orlando, and we saw Tiger Woods and a bunch of other people. Um, and I found this article, because I remember Tiger Woods became a pro in 1996. I knew it was the mid-90s somewhere, all right? And now He grew uh, up in California. He grew up in California. and Have some when, of the highest income tax rates in the country out there. Yes, uh, yes. High income tax, high state income tax. Keep that in mind because that, that's going to come up again. Okay, Tiger Woods admits he left California because of high tax rate after rival Phil Mickelson apologized for saying he might quit the West Coast. Now, this article is 2013. It's uh, a little over three, uh, five, five years ago. And I do remember Phil Mickelson was talking about the high taxes and everything that he pays. And in fact, in one part down here, he says, uh, this is a quote from Mickelson, who is also a, a tremendous golfer. Um, 
If you add up all the, fed, uh, all the federal and you look at the disability and unemployment and Social Security and state, my tax rate's 62, 63%, Mickelson said. So he was thinking about, well, how can he reduce his tax rate? Well, he can do what Tiger Woods did as soon as he became a pro. When Woods became a pro and won his first tournament, uh, by the way, he won three tournaments in his first year. That's pretty amazing, you know, as a rookie. When he won his first tournament, he told the PGA, hold on, hold the phone, hold the phone. Don't send that check to California. I'm moving to Florida. And that's what he did. And Tiger Woods has lived in Florida. That is his main home uh, ever since, you know, 96. And he's got a huge, I mean, I looked it up and, you know, this article has some stuff. He's got a huge home. He's worth almost a half a billion dollars now. Here it is 20 years later. Just think of all the stuff that he's yeah, purchased here. How much here. Florida sales tax has he paid? Yeah, exactly. We have a 6%. <laughs> California fl- gets nothing because their income tax, high income tax rate, drove them slap all the way across the country. Yeah, so he's paying a 6% sales tax on what he chooses to spend. And, you know, he's a wealthy guy. He spends a lot of money and so forth. Instead of paying the what is now a 13% state sales tax in California. No, state income tax. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, state income tax. Thank you. Uh, senior moment there. Yeah. So he chose to vote with his feet. <laughs> he left California and moved to Florida because he wanted to legally get out, get away from that California state income tax of over 13%. At least it's 13% now. I'm not sure what it was in 2013, but it was high. We know it was high. It's California, all right? And I was listening this morning. I don't remember if it was Ingram or Limbaugh. They were talking about how the taxes in California is driving people away in droves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know what your, whatever your federal income tax rate is, if you add on top of that 13.3 from the state you're living in, if the state is California... Yeah, you might think about uh, uh, moving someplace where you could keep more of your money uh, and use it on your family, you know, uh, so that you can decide what to do, uh, you know, with your family. You might think about that. Uh, it, my brother did. My brother lived outside of San Francisco. He moved to Texas many years ago. Mm-hmm. Texas, well, A lot like of Florida. folks have moved away from high tax states, high income tax states, yeah. like New York and California. They've gone to Florida and Texas. And, yeah. uh, so, of course, Nevada, I don't think they've got a uh, state income tax either. And that's just right next door to California. People are, are flooding into Nevada from California. Sure. Yeah. Well, so I, you keep taxing your people and you keep <clears throat> losing your people. It's, it's that simple. Of course, so, that, that's a state tax. But the federal income tax nails everybody. Yeah, it and, does. And I tell you what, everybody that works for a living, Uncle Sam takes a big chunk of your money right off the top before you even see it. They call it withholding. That needs to go away. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's a frog in my throat. But the only way that goes away is if the income tax goes away. Take, making, it, making it a flat tax does not make withholding go away. You know, flattening, the, reducing the number of tax brackets does not make withholding go away, and it doesn't make evasion go away. So the flat tax is not the answer. The fair tax is because it is the only tax reform proposal that gets rid of the income tax. And We've got to get people thinking out of the box because, you know, folks working for a living today, there's not a single person working for a living today that has not lived under the income tax because that came into effect in 1913. That's right. It was 105 years ago. <laughs> and even though they enacted it in October, they made it retroactive to January, uh, those nice people in 19... 19- oh, you know. <laughs> well, if I were a medical person, I would have a word for the income tax. I would call it cancerous. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact... Uh, one of our, our volunteers here in Florida, Paul, Paul Livingston, he, and he's also on the, the board of directors for the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association, just like Bob and I are, okay? And he, he sent us an email. He was trying to make a point, and, and I said, oh, this is good stuff, Paul. I'm going to use this on a future episode of Fair Tax Power Radio. The non-medical definition of cancer is a pernicious, deadly, spreading evil. Today, we suffer from tax cancer, all right? Our literature does point out the many problems and bad practices of 
the current income tax in the IRS. Well, cancer, the medical cancer, I mean, that just saps strength from your body. Yeah. And yeah. the income tax saps strength from the economy. Exactly. It sends businesses overseas. It kills jobs. And, oh, and, it's, and it's not just and it's not just because of the tax, the expense of the tax. It's because the tax code is so convoluted and so complicated that it costs a lot of money keeping up with it. Compliance costs. Mm-hmm. And those compliance costs are paid by the companies and it's rolled into the cost of their products and services. It is. It, and who pays for that? The consumer. Yeah, exactly. We do. Again, the, the, the company or the business may write a check to the IRS, but that becomes a cost of doing business, just like buying materials or paying your labor. That gets rolled into the cost of your products and services. The ultimate retail consumer pays all of those corporate taxes. So Paul goes on here. He said, but what is the root cause of the tax cancer? Oh, I was just going to ask you that. What's yeah. the root cause of tax cancer? It is the DNA of our tax code. That's a great way of putting it, you know, the DNA of our tax code. It taxes production instead of consumption, and it does it with a direct taxation enabled by the 16th Amendment. The now, 16th again, Amendment... We've mentioned this before. It should tell you something that the original Constitution did not allow an income tax. It took a constitutional amendment to allow the federal government to create an income tax. Yeah, not Bad a good idea. idea, was it? Well, not no. what it... Well, when it started out, oh, this is just going to be a little tax that's going to use 7 or 8%, going to hit just the highest people. Go ahead and give us this authority. It's not going to hit you. And within 30 years... Mm. The rate was up to 90%, and you had people, you know, subject to withholding. Within 30 years after it became became available, yeah, and withhold- that's how fast that cancer grew. Withholding is a terrible problem. I mean, people have gotten used to it. People tolerate a lot of stuff. You, give, you have to give Americans, you know, credit because they tolerate stuff that they really shouldn't be tolerating. And withholding is one of them. That makes the government a higher priority than your family. You have to give to the government before you bring your paycheck home to provide for your family. Now, how upside down is that? That is insane. And people of all political persuasions, political ideologies, different party affiliations should agree that's wrong. Your family should be a higher priority than the government. And uh, Paul goes on here with his last paragraph. He says, we are the doctors and the medical community of real true tax reform. Well we said, being, Dr. Malero. That's right. We being the fair tax volunteers, uh, whether we be in Florida or anywhere in the country. But the fair tax volunteers are the doctors that are going to try to rid our economy and our country of this tax cancer. It is up to us to have to inform and educate the voter about tax cancer. We are the ones um, you have to you have to deliver the message to the patient that they are infected with a tax cancer, and like all cancers, they are on the slippery downward slope to death if not treated. We have a treatment for this tax cancer. It is the lifesaver and also the life improver. It is the fair tax, and that will change the DNA of our tax code. So it's an interesting analogy he's yeah, using. Can, can you imagine going to a candidate's town hall meeting and all this is going to spool up big over the summer as the <laughs> midterms election go to a candidate's uh, a town hall meeting and ask him why he why he is such a big fan of cancer and he'll look at you <laughs> funny and say what <laughs> well tax cancer and explain that to him why won't you support the fair tax? i would love to do that to somebody and i can think of someone right now i would love to do that too and, and the thing is at a town hall if you if you premised your uh, comments with saying Listen, let's think of the income tax as a cancer on our economy. A lot of people no, in there... No, 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 don't, don't set him up. Don't tip him off. Just tell him, how come you like cancer? And he'll look at you like you're an idiot. <laughs> then once he thinks you're an idiot, then you can explain to him, hey, wait a minute, you're the idiot because you are supporting this tax cancer. You did not vote to get rid of the income tax. You are not co-sponsoring HR 25, whatever goes on. Mm-hmm. Just ask him why they love the income tax so much. And they won't tell you. I can, t- I can tell you they won't. It's because they love the campaign cash that comes from the lobbyists that are buying tax favors. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Over and 1,200 proposed changes to the tax code so far in this Congress. That's right. Uh, the 115th Congress, over 1,200 proposals to change the tax code. And many of those proposals are backed up by campaign donations. 
Oh, so, mercy. Yep. I'll take, uh, l- let me shift gears here. Give, give you another little piece of po- Alex will take potpourri for 800 here. Uh, <laughs> assume for a moment. Now, I know this will be a painful assumption, but assume for a moment that you work for the IRS. Ooh. Ooh. And also assume that you are cheating on your taxes just like a whole lot of other Americans are. What is the probability that you'll get fired? Uh, let's see. According to this uh, from Hit and Run blog of December of 2016, IRS agents uh, rented millions of dollars of uh, townhomes, spent hundreds of uh, nights in luxury hotels, and the chance of their, you know, getting caught. Eh. Now, how many Just, days a year do those guys travel? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this one. I love this one. Yeah, Bob setting me up here. Taxpayers paid for excessive and inappropriate lodging and travel costs, uh, including for one employee who managed to travel 381 days of the year. Let that sink in. <laughs> 381 days. He must be very, very busy. Oh, I'll tell only you thing what. I, now, I he, bet, now, now, Jade Wiley's pretty good at what he does. I'm not sure he could come up with a way to make somebody go 381 <laughs> days a year and travel. Yeah, and what happens to these guys that work for the IRS? Eh, not much of anything. How, how, many, how many people get fired for, for doing 381 days of travel a year? Yeah, because I got another article here that I'll get to after this one. It says it's nearly impossible to get fired at the IRS for tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so let's go on with this one. Uh, all the lodging and, and costs. These are people who, I don't know, maybe they're an IRS agent in Cincinnati or something, and they have to come to Washington. So... They don't stay at a sleep in or comfort in or something like that. No. And, uh, IRS employees uh, rented million dollar townhomes and luxury apartments and covered hundreds of nights at the Ritz Carlton and other five star hotels in 2015. Hmm. Oh. Now, now, we stayed at the Comfort Inn when we went up to CPAC. Yeah. Let's, let's make that clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not and the Ritz Carlton. It, it was a nice place, but it wasn't exactly what we're talking about here. Oh, you got that right. Jeez. The Senate Finance Committee report on long term IRS travel released Thursday. Now, this was dated, again, December of 2016. So it's, you know, a little, a little over a year old. Uh, let's see. Uh, found out that 27 agents who traveled for more than half of the year, the travel cost to taxpayers averaged $1.4 million per person. Per person, $1.4 million travel expenses that we paid for. More than half of the travel expenses logged in by those employees were for visits to Washington. Don't they have a room with a cot in the IRS building? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, they should. <laughs> yeah, they called it excessive and in- inappropriate. Well, there's a great understatement for you. Yeah, the, t- the description is probably an understatement. Yeah, uh, Former chief technology officer of the IRS spent 168 days on the road uh, during fiscal year 2015 at the Grand Hyatt Hotel in Washington, D.C., costing the taxpayers nearly $39,000. And it goes... You know, not to be outdone by another paragraph here, not to be outdone by their colleagues. Two of the employees highlighted in the report skipped the luxury hotels and opted instead to stay in luxury apartments. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, mercy. We got the IRS is uh, living it up, uh, you know, high on the hog at our expense. And uh, what has happened to these people? It doesn't say in that article. Were oh. these people disciplined in any ways? Yep. Do, did we hear of when the uh, IRS was targeting conservative groups? Mm-mm. Did we hear of anybody being uh, disciplined in any way? Nope. No. Not a no, bit. No, we didn't. Then no. They, they just swept that under the rug. But I'm more, what happens to IRS people who are actually tax cheats, well, who are cheating on their taxes? It says uh, in this one, this is from the Daily Caller, and this is dated uh, February of 2017. So it's just uh, 13 months old. It's a little more contemporary here. More than 99% of the thousands of IRS employees investigated for violating federal tax laws in the past five years avoided termination and continued enforcing other Americans' tax collections. Now, can you imagine if you were embezzling from your company in the private sector? Ah. What company would would let 99% of the embezzlers (laughs) stay on the payroll? 
Yeah, it doesn't happen in the private sector, does it? No. No, but, the, you, the, but then the, the IRS is not in the private sector. Yeah, this, this same article, this, this just stunned me. There were 9,000 between uh, October 2011 and September 2016. The IRS found 9,176 different IRS workers were uh, investigated for tax noncompliance. So that's how many were cheating on their taxes that they knew about. And of those 9,176 people who were IRS people who were cheating on their taxes, a grand total of 74 of them got fired. Yikes. 74. And another 280 were allowed to retire or resign. But I mean, <laughs> 9,176 cheaters and 74 of them were terminated. Oh, yeah. And Bob said, and another 280 were allowed to retire with their full pension? That we pay for? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Now, this yeah. is according to the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration, uh, the IG's office up there. Now, that is amazing. 9,176 workers caught cheating on their taxes, and only 74 of them got fired. I mean, that's just that amazing. That is astounding. I mean, yeah. you, you would not, if, if there were 9,176 people embezzling from GM, I guarantee you 9,176 people would get fired. Yeah. You know, when I, do, by the way, I still haven't done my taxes. Well, you know, I was away at the you better uh, get at tournament. It. Yeah, I need to get at it. Uh, I got the software like you, so... Um, but I'm very careful with that because working, you know, as we do uh, as a board member of the Florida Fair Tax, I want to make sure that my federal taxes are done exactly perfectly. I don't want to raise any suspicion. But there's no way to do that because there are so many different ways. You could get five different IRS agents to look at your return and five different them. They'd, there'd be five different problems, at least with it. I just hope it, that the software yeah. that I use, that, you know, yeah. it's accurate and so forth and and if they because if they if i were guilty of any of these things that we're reading about in this daily caller article guess what would happen to me you'd go to jail you'd go to jail yeah (laughs) go directly to jail do not collect two hundred dollars you know but the irs uh, uh employees well apparently that's a different story for them they have a different standard than we do, don't they? Oh, yeah, so. part of that tax cancer thing. Well, that's we why we about. need to to get out the radiation and the chemo and get <laughs> rid of this thing and and fair tax it to death. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. And then it says members of Congress have criticized the IRS. Oh, wait a minute, members of Congress. How many members of Congress are cheating on their taxes? Well, I just happened to have this article, Politicians Who Skipped Out on Taxes. Now, this is eight years old. It's March 31st of 2010. It's eight years old, so we don't have anybody current. So, okay, it's eight years old. We don't have to embarrass anybody who's currently in Congress. But there's some good ones here. (laughs) Starting with the once Vice President of the United States, Spiro Agnew. (laughs) Uh, back in 73. Yep. Yeah, that was in the 70s. Yeah, that was uh, not, he was the 39th <laughs> vice president serving under Richard Nixon um, after his election in 69. And while Spiro Agnew was a popular public figure, he was also a corrupt one. <laughs> in 1973, it was revealed that Agnew had received more than 29,000 in bribes during his tenure as governor of Maryland. And he pleaded no contest to criminal tax evasion. Yeah, tax evasion. He collected bribes. Guess what? Bribes, <laughs> they're a taxable income. <laughs> not if you don't report it. <laughs> yeah, not if you don't. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm reporting bribes on my income tax yep. return. That is not going to happen. But <laughs> if, he, if he spent that bribe money on new goods and services, the fair tax would make a taxpayer out of it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so... And then there's uh, Guilty Geithner, okay? Uh, Timothy Geithner, remember that name? That wasn't so long ago. Uh, the question that Americans had to ask themselves when uh, it was revealed that Tim Geithner, President Obama's Treasury Secretary, failed to pay $35,000 in self-employment taxes, taxes from his tenure as director at a department of the IMF. I believe that stands for International, International Monetary, Monetary Fund. Fund. Yeah. Yes. All right. While Gar- <laughs> and this was funny. I remember this at the time. Oh, people had a good time with this. 
Well, Gleitner claimed that not paying his taxes was an oversight. (laughs) Some questioned the idea that the Treasury Secretary wasn't able to keep track of his own household finances. (laughs) That speaks to the complexity of the tax code as well as to the ineptitude of that particular public servant. And I think he mentioned a a TurboTax that you and I use. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, and then we have Mr. Rangel, uh, Congressman Rangel. Now, Congressman Rangel, I read up on him. He was a decorated war hero in in uh, in the Korean War. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but he, after serving in Congress for so long, I guess there's something about being in Congress that just kind of mushes your brain or something, and you forget about reporting taxable income and st- stuff like that. Mm, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Con- Congressman Rangel got his. Uh, at his butt in the sling because uh, in 2008, he was also nailed for failing to report rental income on his villa in the Dominican Republic. Revelations that Rangel came up short on his tax bill to the tune of $75,000 were part of a string of ethics concerns. And he, he finally, of course, he was in his 80s when he finally got out of Congress. I mean, you know, go relax, Charlie. So, and then finally, uh, Tom Daschle, former Senate Minority Leader, Tom Daschle took heat uh, beginning of 2009 for failing to report uh, income and taking too many tax deductions, bringing the IOUs to the IRS more than $140,000. So uh, he stepped away from being a Secretary of Health and Human Services because he thought it was a distraction. Yeah. No, because you, because you, you were a crook. You and I would go to jail for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah, so uh, Congress... Um, Criticizing the IRS? Yeah, come on, give me a break. Pot you know? kettle black? Is that, <laughs> that's right. Yes, but you can work for the IRS, cheat on your taxes, and you've got a 99% probability that you won't be fired. Yeah. That yeah. we'll have to keep paying your salary. It's just ins- And the problem is the tax cancer. The problem is the tax code that allows all this. That's right. The problem is the complexity. 75,000 pages of tax code and regulations and court cases and stuff that we have to put up with. The fact that the system allows all that. I mean, you really can't blame somebody for wanting to try to take advantage of the system. I mean, that's just human nature to try to part with as little of your money as you can. Yeah. But uh, when you've got a system that allows that to go happen, you have got to change that system. And if you want to change it to something that works really well, that people can't evade, that the government is not taking a big chunk of your money before you see it, the fair tax is it, a consumption tax. You tax consumption, not income. You let people bring home the full gross amount of their paycheck. You give them a prebate every month, a refund back on taxes that you don't owe because you do not owe a dime under the fair tax until your spending exceeds the poverty level for your household size. Take care of the family before you take care of the government. Pass the fair tax. Hey, that ought to be a slogan. Yeah, there you go. You know, you'd think members of Congress would on, want to pass the fair tax so they'd stop getting themselves in trouble for evading the fair tax. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. I think they would rather have the uh, lobbyists' money, unfortunately. Yeah. So we, the yeah. people, have got to fix that. Yep, yeah, that's right. And you can help us, folks. Let people know about Fair Tax Power Radio and tell t- get everybody you know to come on board with the fair tax. Listen to our podcast. Go on to fairtax.org. Become a member. Give them a small donation and so forth. Let's get this done. It's going to take a groundswell of citizen yeah, people support. People keep asking, how come we don't see a lot of fair tax ads on television or the radio? We just simply don't have the money to buy them. That's right. They, they cost a lot of money to run ads, I and mean, we would love to do that. And if we could really advertise about the fair tax on national TV, we would get it done. But uh, we're going to need a lot more support than what we're getting uh, now. We'll so do that. help so us we, out, folks. We encourage you to do that. Join the 1040 Club if you can. That's just $10.40 a month to yep. Americans for Fair Taxation. Mm-hmm. And that is going to wrap up this edition of Fair Tax Power Radio. Uh, we've had fun in the potpourri category this, over here. This was a good one. It <laughs> was. <laughs> Again, I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Molero. Reminding you the Fair Tax is America's big solution. And once you understand it, you'll demand it. Fair Tax is coming. Don't